Saturday mornings. We usually go out every Saturday at 9 o'clock and um, uh, then swim a couple miles and then go out to breakfast afterwards. And the water down in Laguna Beach, is is it cool? Is it warm for the people who have, haven't been there? Um, this time of year, which is uh, January, it runs. It can run from 53 to 58, 59. I mean, it's been as cold as 52, 53. Um, I've not swam in colder than that. Um, right now, it's probably in the 56, 57 range, and uh, usually conditions are pretty nice, clear. But we've had a lot of recent rain, and that's increase the level of turbidity okay. um, so it's it's not quite as pretty but the landscape is pretty and usually um, and when I was training for my Catalina Channel swim I, it was incredible there were fish all around me I'd see starfish sea urchins um, uh, Garibaldi those are the big orange yeah. plate fish um, and uh, yeah, it's it's just incredible. There occasionally we see dolphins and seals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we had dolphins and seals last week. And they swim around you, or what do they do? Uh, the dolphins will sometimes swim underneath us or to the side of us, um, and the seals are just kind of like the lone curious <laughs> seal. Um, we had a paddler with us last weekend, um, and the seal just bobbed up right next to her. She's like, "Oh my goodness, what was that?" Yeah. <laughs> and that it's like kind of like a aqua dog. Yeah. <laughs> And you do, uh, you have a very interesting line of work that you do. When you're not uh, swimming, what are you doing? Um, I'm a water quality specialist. Um, water actually, quality specialist. Actually, right now I'm an environmental compliance specialist. So okay. my uh, work encompasses a little bit more than water quality, but that's been um, my my focus since, uh, t employment focus since 2002. Um, and this is this is open water. So this is oceans, uh, rivers, lakes. What is this? Actually, it's uh, it's water quality in terms of uh, compliance, okay. regulatory compliance with um, uh, there's different there's different levels. Okay. Of, of water quality. It's okay. <laughs> Start from the bottom. Uh, let's see. There's um, there's. Const it's construction, okay. post-construction. Okay. Um, construction level work is guided. Actually, it, it all comes out of federal level EPA. Okay. Um, after the Cl uh, Clean Water Act mm -hmm. from 1972, and EPA for our uh, non-American uh, Envi listeners. Environmental Protection Agency. Okay. And uh, um, let's see. Uh, our states govern. Uh, our uh, construction-based okay. stormwater plans, okay. and I'm doing a lot of that right now, uh, looking after. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, uh, stormwater uh, pollution uh, control. Okay, so so people who don't live in Los Angeles may not know we have highways and freeways and streets and all of the uh, rainwater, all of the uh, runoff actually ends up in our oceans, correct? Correct. And that brings us to the problem of urban runoff. Urban runoff. Urban runoff. Okay. It was funny because today at work, somebody asked me, I was, I'm trying to get people to come swim with us in the ocean, and a friend of mine said, oh, but I'm afraid of sharks. And I've only seen one shark, and it's not... Yeah, yeah. The, the little shovel so the, the greater threat, the greater threat is, is urban runoff. Is urban runoff bacteria? I'm more afraid okay. of bacteria. Um, before I was in this line of work, I uh, I swam during the summer during a rainstorm. It was 1995, and I became very very ill afterwards. Oh. I was sick for about a month with fever, cough. Uh, doctors never really diagnosed it, and then. Um, I was sick for another five months, six months total with a, a, like a respiratory problem oh. where I was coughing at night. And, and as an ocean swimmer, this is basically just the bacteria and other crud and <laughs> junk that is in the, our ocean water. Bacteria, metals, uh, really? uh, 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 trash, pollutants. Okay. Um, the... Uh, 
I'm blanking out now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have a question. Just yes. a basic question. So, in a metropolitan area like Los Angeles mm-hmm. or m- any other places around the world, what is the fundamental um, guideline that an ocean swimmer or lake swimmer should consider when there's been a significant amount of rain? You don't want to swim after rain, and typically you don't want to swim after uh, the first rain after an extended dry period because during that dry period it allows pollutants to uh, become concentrated on our roadways and okay. uh, it's called the first flush okay so you don't want to swim after the first, first flush, flush. This. and okay. usually you want to wait 72 hours or okay. three days uh, that's a rule of thumb okay. uh, after this last really big rain event that we have which spanned yeah. Nearly a week. Um, I stayed out for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Just, we just av- avoided swimming. Wow. So wow. It was, I mean, swimming in the ocean. Yes, yes. And, uh, in fact, we didn't even do our uh, New Year's Day polar bear swim uh, in Laguna Beach, except for my friend Ray, because uh, yeah. he used to swim up in Santa Cruz. And they have, they have septic tanks in Santa Cruz. Okay. And he said, well, we knew we were swimming in poo anyway. So. <laughs> and he didn't get sick, but yeah. I'm... I have gotten sick, yeah. so I'm a little more cautious. Yeah. And so basically what's happening is all of the junk on our city streets right. gets flushed out into the ocean. Right. And then essentially we're drinking untreated sewage water. That's right. Wow. Um, I know. And, and, and with, the, with the, uh, the rain event and then our first flush event, that's, that's pretty significant. There's another variety of urban runoff. <laughs> and what is that? It comes in different flavors. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, it's uh, nuisance flows. What and is that? Nuisance flows? They call them nuisance flows. They're, um, it's runoff generated by uh, over-irrigation, people washing their oh. cars in their driveways. And so it's a lesser quantity of water flowing, but it cap- captures a greater amount of pollutants. Oh. Yeah. And then it's you know the bacteria, viruses, oil, grease trash debris. Um, I, I think it's interesting. A lot of our, our waterways, and there are websites for this, that have, yeah. uh, just about all of them, well, a lot of them have uh, developed, they're called TMDL. TMDL, okay. Total, total maximum daily loads, and it's okay. the amount of a pollutant that is determined to be acceptable to go into the waterway. Really? I think that's really, I, I've never developed, been involved in the development of a TMDL, but the notion seems a little wild to me. So I think the Los Angeles River has a TMDL for trash. So wow. that's how much trash, <laughs> I know. It, it sounds kind of wrong to Is me. there any? Um, I don't know how they monitor that wow. either. Do you, is, just for people who are listening, I, and they're obviously open water swimmers, how in the world can their websites with these TMLDs, TMDLs, po- TMDLs, total maximum daily load, that are posted. Yeah, they're posted. Wow! A- after this uh, uh, interview, we'd very much like to post all of those oh. websites. We would love to actually inform our open water swimming community what those are. I I know the EPA has listings. A uh, state of California on the uh, state. Uh, I think it's called Water Boards. Uh, okay. Uh, the uh, California Water Boards. They have listings of what it's called are the 303D <laughs> listed water bodies, and those are um, that's nationwide. Yeah. Every state has uh, 303D listed water bodies. Those are those rivers and estuaries and creeks that are impaired for certain um, certain uh, well, they have impairments, certain pollutants. Oh. Um, I'm trying to remember. Newport Bay is listed for. Uh, and that, you're talking about Newport Beach, California. Newport Beach, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, it's listed for sediment. Um, I think it used to be listed for bacteria, but it was taken off. Some of these listings are largely due to agriculture. And um, when the agricultural use is taken away, sometimes the, the, the test parameter or the, the thing that was tested for uh, falls into an acceptable range. Newport, I think, is also listed for selenium. And selenium is naturally occurring Okay. In our soil. So how do they go back and treat for that? I don't know. Oh. So um, it's kind of interesting. A lot of, uh, a lot of new development, um, I'm tra- I think within our state, um, since 1992, we're 
new development was required to have uh, best management practices or BMPs mm -hmm. in place to treat for pollutants based on land use okay. and their 303D impairment. Um, land use being like if it's residential, they would expect um, fertilizers, pesticides, uh, trash and debris. Um, uh, there's tables out there that okay. Okay. Uh, And then commercial and industrial have different, um, different types of pollutants. Um, the best management practices were categorized as structural and non-structural. Non-structural are things like good housekeeping, um, education, keeping people informed of the problem. Structural BMPs were like, um, they would be like, uh, oh, like grassy, not grass cutting? Grassy oh. swale, oh, you know. Okay. And, um, but then those started falling into uh, uh, treatment BMPs. Actually, treatment BMPs now are more like uh, storm filters or CDS units. Um, uh, storm filter, uh, like a giant underground vault with giant, like giant Brita canisters in it that okay. filters the storm water runoff. Okay. Um, treating for bacteria is more difficult. There is a product called a Smart Sponge, okay. which I'm not sure about that one. Uh, there's there was a project. Uh, down the street from here on Pacific Coast Highway, Pacific City, that's kind of yeah. on hold. In, yeah, okay. in Huntington Beach, California. Huntington Beach, California, yeah. And they were uh, they were proposing to have a storm filter and a smart sponge in series and then um, a CDS unit at the other end. But I, I'm presumably those products are in place, but I don't know how or who is maintaining them at this point. Oh. Um, so. A lot of new development is required you know, to have have the treatment BMPs in place. A lot of cities are going back and retrofitting um, uh, their catch basins and, and storm drains. Um, city of Los Angeles, I think City of Los Angeles and City of Long Beach, you'll see gratings over their um, uh, yeah, catch basins, yeah, yeah. and that's to keep the larger trash and particulate from going into the storm drains. And then they'll have the street sweepers go by and pick that up. So. That helps a little bit. Some of the catch basins they put in uh, their um, they're these fossil filter inserts. Um, they're kind of like urban diapers. Um, <laughs> urban diapers, urban, urban runoff. We're learning a lot of new terms today. Well, I kind of yeah. made that one up, okay. but it, ca it captures a lot of the oil and the grease from okay. the roadways. Um, some beachside cities uh, practice. I was talking about nuisance flows yeah. before. Um, they practice. Uh, dry weather diversion. Okay. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure Laguna Beach does it from April through October during our so-called dry season. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, what that does.